I will be starting shortly. Welcome to another episode of Microcontrollers with Kinger North, and that's me, Kinger North. This is episode 24, Model Train Layout Lighting FX with CircuitPython and Arduino. Like I said, welcome. Let's have a look at what we're using today for this show. So today we've got a number of boards with us. We've got uh, actually four different circuits we're going to be looking at and we're going to be programming two of them we're going to i'm going to show you the other two and show you the programming involved and so it's going to be a slightly different format than what we use most weeks but we're going to be starting out here at this point this is our uh, arduino uno and it is connected and it is actually doing a lighthouse beacon simulator and i'll show you how that works when we get to that part of it down here this one is the NeoPixel that you'll see flash in a moment over there. And there it goes, it flashed. And that is being used as a welding simulator. So that's gonna look like a welding shop. On the other board, we have a pair of Trinket M0s. They're both running CircuitPython as well as the M4. And one of them is just a warning strobe light. And I'll talk about that and the features that are involved with that, but we're not gonna I'm going to show you the programming for that one. We're not going to build it. Unlike the welding shop, we'll build that one. And the final one is a campfire. And it actually has a red and a yellow LED. And you'll see that the red LED changes intensity. And we'll talk about that in more detail as well. So we'll go through those. But that's what we're going to be playing with today. So what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at this. And we're going to start with the... Arduino version. So let me just move the other ones out of the way and we'll come into our main view here. And we can zoom in a little bit there and we shall see it there. So this may look a little confusing at first. So let me just remove this little piece here. What I have here is just four yellow LEDs is all that we're using here. We're using four simple yellow LEDs. And this is going to simulate our lighthouse circuit. I've actually built this little piece here. I've printed this in 3D on my 3D printer and I'll talk about what that does for me when we get to it. So to show you the simple circuit, let's have a look at what is involved with this for today. So what we have here, this is our circuit. So very simply, I've just taken four outputs from my Arduino. Now the big thing to note here is that I'm using five, six, nine, and 10. And the reason why I'm using that, they have these little symbols beside the numbers. And those symbols represent telling me that those are pulse width modulation output bits. So those are gonna be very, very important to us for this project because we actually have to vary the brightness of each one of these LEDs. And then after that, we just basically have all the commons connected together back to ground. And we have an output from each going through a resistor. In this case, I'm using a uh, 470 ohm resistor connected to each of the LEDs. And it's as simple as that. What we're trying to achieve though, is something that looks like this. 
And what we're doing is, so as each light, there are four lights. So across the top here, I've got them labeled as light one, light two, light three, and light four. Light one during a 360 degree rotation. So that's the position going around in a circle for the rotary beacon. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase the intensity of light one until it hits peak. And that's gonna be when it gets to 90 degrees. And then it's gonna start dropping down. And when it gets to 180, it's gonna to go to zero after that. So it's gonna be off. In the meantime, when this one, light one gets to full brightness, light two will start to brighten up. And it will increase, so it's peaked at 180, 90 degrees apart, one quarter of a revolution. Green is gonna do the same thing as what blue just did, except it's gonna be a quarter revolution later. And then finally, this uh, pink or mauve, it'll be doing it last, light four, and it'll be there. So every 90 degrees, one of the lights is gonna be at full brightness, one of the lights is gonna be just starting. One of the lights is just finishing. So if we pick any point in between, you'll see that as the pink one in this case at the start is dropping, the red is increasing. So that's just light four will be decreasing, light one will be increasing. So we're giving it this nice pattern. And what this is going to do is simulate movement. And that's really what it's all about here. So let's have a look at our code. Let's create some code to make this work. So I'm just gonna turn that image off. We're gonna start here with our basic sketch that we always do. This is a brand new sketch. So the first thing we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna to have to go file save as. And we're gonna give this a spot here. And in fact, uh, I'm not gonna do it in the Arduino library. Let's do it in documents. We're gonna to go to our electronic shows like we normally do. We're way down here at episode 24. So we've actually come a long way. These are all the episodes, all the coding that I've used in the different episodes at Images. So I actually have the full program here, Lighthouse One Arduino. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a new file and I'm just gonna call it Lighthouse. Just because I don't use that name as, as one of the names for an Arduino file right now. So up here at the top, it's now called Lighthouse. We're gonna start our normal type of coding here. So let's put a comment in the top and this is just Lighthouse by Kinger North. And this is what we're gonna do is basically we're gonna tell us what we're doing. This is simulating a, uh, actually you gotta spell rotary, right? Let's put an A in there. Rotary beacon. of a lighthouse and that's really what we're doing here and this is what we want to do and we want to keep it pretty simple the next thing we would do is we would include any helper files so let's go ahead and do that and you're going to be amazed at how easy that is this week so include any required helper files and you'll see that we actually have none there are no helper files that we're going to include this week. It's gonna be a lot simpler than what we've done before. And welcome to whoever's joined. I see somebody is in there in watching the live stream now. I'm not sure who it is, but that's okay. And the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna to have to create some pin assignments because we do have to hook up our four LEDs. So create pin assignments and Variables. So we're gonna do that like we normally do. Now the one point to remember here, and I'm gonna add a note about this just to remember, is all of the pins need to um, have pulse width, mo oops, M for modulation. So we all have to have pulse width modulation just to, uh, Make sure that we can vary them. If you use a discrete pin that the Arduino has, good morning, Walter. Um, if you use a discrete pin, it'll just be on or off. Well, we don't want that. That's not good enough for what we're doing here. We need that fading effect in order to make this simulate what we want. So let's go ahead and create our, our pin assignments. So this is just light one pin, and that's going to be equal to five. Now, we're going to do this the simple way here. We're gonna copy that line. 
So we'll copy, we'll go to the end, right click, paste, paste. We have four lights. So these are going to be light pin two, three, and four. And they are connected, in, as I showed in the drawing there, they're connected to pins five, six, nine, and 10. So there we have it there. So that's gonna be our all of our pins that we require. I do have one more variable to create. Um, and we're going to talk about that when the time comes. We're gonna start by doing it uh, simple and we're gonna go down here and we're gonna go into the setup now. So we'll be coming back and adding one variable, but when I use it, we'll add it. So let's go down here to the setup. So this is first thing in here is we're just gonna have to create the pin modes. Let's try that, there we go. So this is just something, and, then, and this is the objects that we're doing, just like we do before. We always have to create objects, regardless of the language. Whenever we're hooking to an external device, we need to have those objects created within the program so that we can know what they are. So these are just pin mode, and the first one is light one pin, and it is going to be set up simply as output. So nice and simple. Nothing too fancy. And because we're doing it and they're all gonna be similar, let's just do a copy and a paste. So I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna move down here and I'm gonna go paste, paste, paste. And very simply, I'll just come over here and change it to light pin two, three, and four. And now I have my four object pins. So that's nice and quick. We don't have to waste a lot of time typing them all out and as long as we typed it right the first time we're going to get it right the rest of the time the next thing we're going to be working on is we're going to be working on the main loop now the loop is going to actually have to work with something so what we're going to do is we're going to start out with a wave and basically that's what we were looking at in that image so if we go back to that image for a moment this is the wave position here from zero degrees to 360. Well, zero and 360 are actually the same number. So we really want to go from one to 360. And that's why I didn't put in that other variable now because we need to give the wave a starting point. So very quickly, I'm going to create my last variable that I need. And this is to know where the wave is currently. So I'm going to go here, wave equals one. I'm not going to use zero. A lot of times we put zero in as a default variable. This time I'm putting in the variable of one because I actually want to go from one to 360 and I'll use 360 as a number. And then I want it to reset back to one. So that therefore I get all the numbers every time. We just want to make sure that we cover all 360 degrees. And that's really what we're doing here. So what we're going down here is in the loop, we are now going to have to create the situation for each one of these lights. So the first thing we're gonna look at in the loop is we're gonna to have to, um, this is, I like the word sets better. So this is uh, sets the operation of light one. And the key here is, is that we have to do each of these lights individually because they're all unique on that graph that I showed. And you remember on the graph there, we started out at, at uh, zero, blue was basically off, and then it turns on at, at one. So it's gonna start lighting up at one. So it's valid anytime we're at the bottom of the scale. And basically what happens is it climbs up to, until it gets to 90, which is full brightness, and then it comes down. So we have to create that in code. So let's see how we do that down here. So first of all, we're gonna start out with our good old if statements. So I'm just gonna start out with if the wave is less than 181 we're gonna to have to do something with it and it's as simple as that so we're gonna start out with any time that it's less than 181 so from 1 to 180 we want to be able to control it so this is going to be our entrance into what we want it to do and we're going to go here and we're gonna put it in here well we also can add an else statement in this because we know that if the number is 181 to 360, we just want the light to be off. That's what our graph showed. So let's do that now. 
And good morning to whoever else showed in there. Good morning and welcome to the stream. Uh, that could be Brian, I'm not sure. Maybe he'll type in and say something or it could be somebody else. And so we're gonna add an else statement here though. We're gonna add an else. And this is to do with what do we do if it's 180 or larger. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep this really simple and all we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it off. So because we're using pulse width modulation, we use the analog feature. So we go analog, write, because we're gonna write a variable to it. We're gonna select our pin. So this is going to be light one pin, matches the name we created up above. And then what we have to do is we have to give it a value. And in this case here, we want it to be off, so we just put in the value of zero. We, we keep it really simple. And that's what's gonna happen in here between the if and the else is where we're gonna put everything when it is in range. And we're gonna do the math and I'm gonna show you how to build that for climbing up, getting to the peak and then coming back down. And basically we're gonna be repeating that and making adjustments for each one of the four waves. So that's what we're doing here. So this is on during this part of the cycle, off during when it's, this is not true. When it's false, we're gonna turn the light off. So let's build this program. Now, luckily I've already done this, so you're gonna get some advantage here. What we have to do is we have to do two things when we're true, is we have to increase the light value and then decrease the light value depending what it is. So the easiest way to do that is to use another if statement. So we're gonna say if the wave is less than 91, we're gonna be rising. So let's handle that math first. Let's just do that. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna say, okay, what do I do if it's 90, 90, um, 1 to 90? So if it's 1 to 90, what I'm gonna do is I got the really easy job in this first one. And what we're gonna use here is an analog write. Again, because we wanna have a variable output, we're gonna set it to the light pin. So this is light one pin. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set it to whatever the wave value is at this point. So it's going to go from 1 to 90. And we're actually going to take it. <laughs> it's only me, Maynard. Okay, Brian. <laughs> Welcome. So we're going to actually have it right. And we're just going to increase the, the value from 0 to 90. Now. You're going to say, well, is this bright enough? Well, in the layout, it probably will be in here. It's going to be a little harder to see because of all the extra lights I need for broadcasting. But we'll see how that works out. So what you could do, if you remember from previous shows, we did a thing called mapping. And if we map it, then we have the ability to increase that value and scale 0 to 90, the answer. Scale it from 0 to 255. And you could actually get up to full brightness then. But you would have to use the mapping every time you call this instruction. You would just include a, a map ahead of it where you do the math and say, hey, map this and then write it. So it's just a little more involved, but not that hard to do. So there we go. If it's from 1 to 90, we just write in the wave value, we'll be fine. If that's not true, this is where else comes in and saves me saying if greater than 90, but less than 1181, because 181 is already handled in the first if statement, I can just use the else statement here. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do another analog write. And this is where you have to figure out the math. And this is the beauty, because if you get it wrong, you just figure it out and reload it again. So now this is going to be analog, and again, analog write, and we're gonna go light, and we're gonna go light one pin, same as we've been doing. This time, what we need to do for the math is we're gonna, we wanna we want make it darker. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do 180 minus the wave for the brightness. Now, you say, does this work? Well, let's have a look at it. When it gets to 90, I'm still using the first formula, so wave is gonna be equal to 90. The light's gonna be at a, a level of 90. When it gets to 91, what happens is it goes to the else statement. The else statement says take 180, subtract 91 from it. What's the value? 89. Hey, look at that, it decreased by one. And that continues through. When it's 175, it would be 180 minus 175. The wave value, the light value will be 
five. So it's working its way towards zero as it gets there. At 180, what is it? Well, at 180, it'd be 180 minus 180, it is zero. And then it's handled, everything else beyond that is handled outside of that value. So that's how we do the math. So that takes care of the first light. Believe it or not, that is actually everything we need to do to make that first light go from zero to 90 to full brightness and back, or brightness and then back down to zero using the position. Now, one of the things we need to do in order to do the position, we need to increase the position. So somewhere here before, at the end of the program, after we set all the lights, we're gonna come in here and we're gonna do something and we're gonna have to increment the wave value. So what we're gonna do is say wave equals wave plus one. And by doing that, what we're doing is we're saying, hey, every time it gets to this point, it started at one, so when it gets here, go to two, okay? And that's all that is. So that's uh, actually, I meant to put the comment in there because that's actually the instruction we're gonna use. So let me move that down and let me put the comment up above it. So this is the increment the wave position. So that probably will work better. So increment the wave position, wave equals wave plus one. Now, what we have to do is what happens when it's greater than 160? In other words, it gets to 161, we have to do something with it. So what we're gonna do in down here, and this is down near the bottom of the page, but it's if wave is greater than 360, so if it gets to 361, this will be true, we have to do something with it. So let's go ahead and do something with it. And basically what we're gonna say here is then wave equals one. So we reset it back to the first position. So at 361, we basically say get rid of the 360, it's just one. And that's what we want it to be. And that's going to get us all reset. And then we have to do one more thing with this. We have to create some sort of a pause in here. If we don't create a pause, what's gonna happen is the speed is gonna go cra crazy on us. So create the rotational speed. So that's what we're gonna do in here. And that's just a simple delay instruction. So delay, and I'm gonna put in a delay. I know what works in this, but you, you're gonna play around with it. For me, I like 30. And that was by trial and error. Trust me, this wasn't my first value. So there's what I've done there. So let's go ahead and validate this just to see if it's happy. And we wanna make sure we have the typing correct to this point, because I'm gonna go ahead and download that into this board. Even though I have a working version of it in the board right now, We'll create the working version. And so it's almost finished compiling. I haven't seen any errors yet. Knock on wood. There, you probably heard the knock. But anyways, there we go. So it's validated. So let me go up to here to tools, make sure I'm connected to my COM port. It says I am. So let's go ahead and upload this. And when I do, only one of those LEDs is gonna be blinking. So down here, we're gonna see the difference down here. When it finishes, it's compiling. Now it's uploading. All the lights have gone up. Now we see one light increase and it's getting dimmer and it's off. And it's off until it, the cycle gets back to zero again or back to one and now it starts to increase again. So that's how you get the first pulsing going on. So basically what we need to do is we need to repeat all of these commands in here. So what I do here is I just go copy. I'm gonna create a couple of spaces in, um, spaces in here, just so I have some room to work with and I'm gonna go paste. Now I'm gonna say put in light two. So light two is gonna require a little different math than light one because it doesn't start until it gets to 91 is really when it lights up the first time. So what we're gonna do for light two is we're gonna say if the wave, and instead of saying less than 180, what we have to say is it greater than 90. 
because we want it to start at 91. But we also want it to shut off when it gets to 271. So we're going to have to put an and statement in here. So that's just a couple of and percents bracket. And then we're going to go in a wave is less than 271. That's what it works out on my graph on my uh, on my graph that I created earlier. Now, because we have two arguments in this if statement, we need to put brackets around all of it. So it recognizes both, otherwise it's gonna only try to do the first one. So here we go, if wave is greater than 90 and it's less than 270, then we want it to go into here, into the next part. And what we wanna do here, well we went here, what do we do if it's less than 91? That was our increase. So instead it's gonna be less than 181 because at 180 it hits peak. Then we're gonna come down here, we're gonna do our analog right, we're gonna to go to pin two. And our wave is not just gonna be a wave now, it's gonna be a wave, but we have too big of a value. So at 91, for instance, we want it to have a value of one. Well, we do that by subtracting 90 from it. That takes care of that. On this one here, we're gonna to go to pin two. And instead of being at here, we're gonna go back, we gotta work backwards towards 270. Um, so what we actually do here is we actually end up with the value 270 in here, minus the wave for light two. And then of course on this other one here, instead of light one, let's make sure we turn light two off. If I've done this correctly, when I upload this, we should see two lights blink. So we're gonna try it and find out what happens. So right now it's compiling. Now it says it's uploading, so the light should go out here in a moment. Oh, actually, it's already done. Look at that. We went. So we'll see number two fade away. We'll wait, and then you'll see number one is starting to glow. Comes up, and then number two is going up. Number one is dropping in intensity. Then number two will drop in intensity. That's working. Well, that worked out really well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead... And I'm gonna cheat a little bit here because the math is similar for all of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna copy lights three and four. So I'm just gonna copy that from my working program because it's identical to this one anyways. I'm gonna go paste. So what we have here is calculate the position of light three. Let me just create an extra line in here. So at light three, this saves me from typing it, but I'll explain it. We don't start this one until that's after over, over 180. And we do it and we shut it off at 271. In fact, uh, yeah, this one here. Uh, no, if it's over 180 and then we say as long as it's less than 271 because it, then it goes all the way up to 360. So we just do the math. It's pretty simple. It's similar to the first one. We're just 180 degrees out. The fourth one is the trickier one. The fourth one in this case, it doesn't turn on until it gets to above 270, but it doesn't, but it increases, but it doesn't shut off until it gets to 90. So we actually have to do here, we have to look at the wave a little bit differently. So our first operation with two checks, we, we say if the wave is greater than 270, so the 200, 271 to 360 would be true, or, so we use two of the bars, the bars are located usually above the enter key on your uh, keyboard for a PC. And then it says, and, or the wave is less than 91. So it's gonna be valid from 271 to 360. It's also gonna be valid from zero to 90. And then we just do the formulas inside for the math. And we basically turn the other light off. When we're done, we upload this. We'll see these four lights here. When it gets to the upload, they've all turned off. Actually, now they should all turn off. We're gonna see that down here, the lights are gonna start glowing and they do, and they'll go around in the, in the circular pattern. So that's what it's doing. It's gonna simulate the lighthouse. Now, if you put that inside of a lighthouse, you're gonna have a little bit of a problem in the fact that you can see the other lights when you don't want to. So what I've done is I've printed this little piece here. And I'm gonna show you that, see if it'll focus in. I printed a little piece, and this is just a little piece with translucent material. 
I've drilled four holes in the bottom to fit the four LEDs. Actually, I printed the holes in there. I put a little divider in the inside, that little cross, and I painted it white. Now, it's actually the clear plastic as well. And then I put a lampshade around it. This would sit inside my lighthouse. And what I would do is I would put this in here, and then I could put a roof on it on the top. I build this and put this above on a walkway and build down the wiring down through the center part of the tower. So here it is here. I'm going to put it on here. And you can let you can determine what you think for how it works for effect. Line it up on the lights there. And you can see that that's there. But when I turn it, this is what we want to see. So let me just try and get that there. What we'll see is we'll see the beacon will come around. Now, if I block shadow it, it looks like it's moving in that rotational direction. But the nice thing is it's blocking it, most of it, from the other side. So you're just getting a slight glow when it's on the other side of the tower. And as it moves around, you're going to get that positioning. So that's what that does for me. And the diffusion of the seeing the printing lines works out fine for me. I'm happy with that. So that gives me a simulation and I can build that in there. Now, by changing that last delay that was down here in the program, so way down here, I can either speed up or slow, slow down that rotation and you decide what works for you. And again, like I said, if you really need to have more brightness, which on a layout you may not, in here it might've been a good idea, you may want to use the mapping function on each one of these formulas. And then all you do is say, hey, here, calculate what wave should be, and then just write the wave value. Analog, pin, light pin for wave. And on the one before, do the mapping that remaps that value using that math to give you a value from 0 to 255 for each, each lamp. So that's really it. So that's how that works. I hope that was interesting because that took a little bit to figure out, but you can get yourself a lighthouse going on there. So if you've got any... If you're near the water, you're doing one down the coastline, you can, you can throw in a lighthouse. You can have one in the background, maybe that's uh, on the, supposed to be on a bay or something like that to protect the harbor entrance. And you might be using the train to cross the bridge on your layout. This gives you something with a little bit of life to it on the layout with special effects lighting. So I think this works out really well. This is a nice, simple little project. It takes a little while to do, but it doesn't take that long. The program's only, what, 75 rungs, including all my comments. So it's not that bad. And it's something that you can do in a reasonable amount of time. So hopefully you've enjoyed that. So we're going to move on to the next things that we have involved here. And I have a number of them in here. So I'm going to go through, and I'm going to move that out of the way. And I'm going to bring my next board in here, and I'm just going to unplug these pins from it because we won't be needing those anymore. So what I've done here, uh, let's see how we're going to do that. And I might be able to go in one more. There we go. So this is a Trinket M0. So this one here is basically running and it's doing a strobe light. If you notice the light comes on bright, but then fades out. So it turns on right away, but then it takes time to fade. If I tilt that, let's see if I put it in its own shadow. You can actually kind of see that better now. It doesn't just shut off. And a lot of times when we see strobe lights in the real world, it looks to us when we're doing it, that it comes on immediately and then takes time to shut off. Well, let me show you how I did that. And I did that in CircuitPython. So I'm just going to close the Arduino window and I'm going to open up the CircuitPython window and I have that program here and I'll talk about it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the picture also that shows you how this thing is wired up. And let's see if I can figure out which way this is in my pictures. This is always fun. Um, there we go. Here's this board here. So on the right hand side, I'm showing this trinket here. And basically it's really simple. I've taken the ground pin. I've run it through a 220 ohm resistor, since this is a slightly lower voltage. Ran it to the LED, and then I bring it back and I put it into pin zero. Now, you could use the same board to program in Arduino or in CircuitPython, but I did it in CircuitPython because it allows me to do things much quicker for something like this. 
So that's the basic circuit. So we'll come back to this because that's the strobe warning light as it says across the bottom. The other one is for the campfire and we'll do that one next. So let me just turn off that image. Let me show you the program that's here. Uh, that might be a bit small. I'm gonna open that up just a little bit. Let's see if what works here for that. Uh, that's probably a good size there. So this is my strobe warning light. It's written in CircuitPython. Uh, I'm using 5.3.1. Uh, version 6 is coming out shortly. The full stable version. So these will be updated uh, as we go along. But I don't think we're going to see anything here. I've just concluded this note. I've used this note before whenever I'm using the, uh, the analog inputs and outputs. Just to remind myself. And basically it just lets me know that here the analog inputs have a resolution of 2 to the power of 16. The outputs have a resolution of 2 to the power of 15. So if you actually figure out the numbers in the first one here, the analog inputs has a resolution from 0 to 65,537 and the outputs are 30, 32,767. So unlike the Arduino where maximum brightness is at 255, on the circuit python it is actually 32767 is full brightness so we have to keep that in mind when we're doing stuff so let's continue on down through our notes here again like anything else i include any helper files required in this case i've included time because i'm going to use a timing feature board because i need to be able to address my output pin uh, dot star is just that built-in light that's on the board which is actually off in this border because i turned it off and then pulse IO is my pulse width modulation. Those are already built in to the board. There are no extra files to add. I just have to turn them on so it's not taking up memory if I don't need them. So we move down here. The dot star is on the board, so I create it and I turn it to a brightness. Star dot show tells the dot star to update. And then basically all I do is tell it to go to zero. So I've actually turned off the light. So the light on the board is not on. The only light on there is a green LED that says I have power to the board. That's the only thing that's there. There's normally another light in the middle of the board. You'll see it when I do the other one, but right beside my finger there, there's a little RGB light, dot star, similar to a NeoPixel. And I've just turned it off. I've just said, turn off. It's distracting and I don't want to leave it on. And that's really all it is. So now here I create my pin assignment on here. Well, I want to create an L, a red LED and I want to create it as a pulse width modulation output and I'm going to connect it to pin D0 down here. If I look to see where that pin is connected, it's connected to the zero on the board, pin zero. And pin zero is an analog output pin. So you have to look at, again, you can check out your pinouts just like you do on the Arduino. Not every pin has every feature, so you have to just check what's on available on your particular board. Create any variables. I've created one called B, and basically that's just going to be for the duties um, for setting up a variable. It's very simple. I'll show you what that does. And then there's red dot duty cycle. This is how I set the rate of pulse. And by default, I'm going to set it to zero. This actually this is the brightness. This is the output value. So when I do a pulse width modulation out, when we did it in Arduino, we used analog write to set the variable. Here you use red dot, and the name of the pin, red dot, and then duty cycle, and whatever the value. So this value needs to go from 0 to 32,767. So that's what that is. That gives me, that's the brightness. That's going to be what value do I want to go out on the pulse width modulation. So that's when I write it. So let's look at the whole program. This is the whole program. There's not much to it. So it says fire up the strobe. So what do we do? We take the red duty cycle. And I set it to 32,000, which is almost full brightness. And that's what it's doing. And then I tell it to sleep for 0 0.03 seconds. In other words, 30 milliseconds. So it comes on 30 milliseconds. I, after that, I decrease it. And what I'm doing here is I'm using what they call a, a four a variable and I just call this variable B because it's just a, a variable it could be X it could be a word it's just a, a name and it says in range so as long as B is in range and I started with B is in zero so what it's going to say is from 32,000 down to zero 
because it wants my starting point, my stopping point, and then how much I increment per step. And I've told it to decrease it by 100. So I'm actually gonna start with the high number of 32,000, which is this one, and I'm gonna count down towards zero. And I'm gonna do it in increments of 100. So it's gonna go from 32,000 to 31,900, 31,800. And it's gonna cycle through, and each time it's only gonna sleep for one millisecond. So that gives me my fade rate. If you wanna see how that changes, well, let me take one millisecond and make it 10 milliseconds. So I just have to get rid of a zero. If I save this now, you're gonna see how much longer it takes for this light to slow down. Incredibly long time. Well, maybe one was a little fast, so that's okay. Let's put the zero back in. But this time, let's change the one to, a, I don't know, a three. We'll make it three milliseconds. I'll save it. There we go. Now we got a little longer drain. You can see that it takes a little bit longer once it comes up to brightness, and then it falls off. So we can make a quick adjustment to this just by adjusting one number on here, and it's our just our sleep mode. Okay, and then what I do is I say turn off the strobe light. So basically, once I bring it down, I make sure it goes to zero and I just turn it off. Because this will stay in this loop until it hits zero. Problem is, is if your step is a little bit different and you go below zero, I don't want to be putting a negative number to it. So I tell it, hey, go to zero. And then I create my time between pulses and that's three seconds. So once it's finished, it waits three seconds and then pulses again. If you look at the warning towers that they use for aviation and things like that, the little warning lights, there's a long pause between those things coming on. So you could set it what works for your layout. So that's what this looks like. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close that one. And actually, I'm going to change out and I'm going to go to the other circuit here. Now, because it's um, this here, what we have to do is I want to disconnect it from the system. So I'm going to eject that. And it's going to tell me it's okay to unplug. So I'm going to unplug that one. I'm going to turn this board around and I'm going to plug in this side. And this is our campfire. So this is, and let me just move that wire out of the way there. There's, you can see it. You can see here I have that dot stars on in this one. So there's the dot star. So let me go and see if I can, I'm just gonna close all these windows here. Uh, in fact, actually it popped up as soon as I put it in, Campfire 2. So it's up here and running. So this is, uh, looks like Campfire 2 that's in here right now. So what I have in here is again, I've included in my files at the beginning. So I've got time board. This time I use digital IO because I'm actually talking to a couple of pins. And the reason is, is because there's a pin 13 here. Actually, that's why I'm thinking this might not be the right one. Let me just close that and go open. And I'm going to pick the code that's on there. And I'm actually going to read off the chip. Ah, it's Campfire 3. I thought I corrected it. So this is Campfire 3. Now, this is something we can't do with Arduino. In this particular one, I was able to go and get the code right off the board. When we're using Arduino, we need the source code. And you can see this is actually a fair bit, this is a fairly bright. What happens here, and I'll, and I'll just go through this and tell you. So what I'm using here is I'm doing a, um, I'm using the Trinket M0, and this goes through here. And what I've done is I've created, I have my time, my board, my digital IO, my dot star, pulse width modulation, and I've also created something called random. And we're gonna use random in here. So the dot star is here. It says dot star show. Well, remember I could turn it off. Right now that dot star is on and I really don't need that red light on in the board. So I could go in here and I could go star and then give it the position, which is zero. And I'm just gonna say that equals bracket zero comma zero comma zero and close bracket. And I think that should do it. If I do that, when I fire it back up here, you can see the dot star is now off. So I've turned off that dot star. So that's just an added little thing. Uh, create some pin assignments. So again, the red is connected to D0, but I also have a yellow, which is a pulse width modulation output is D2. 
Now, if you notice, I didn't use D1. D1 is actually only an analog input or a true analog out, not a digital analog out. It's not pulse width modulation, it's analog. So you can actually hook up a speaker to it. But uh, I don't want to do that in this case, so I'm using pins 0 and 2. And it says create any other variables needed. And I have my variables here and I created, I've did the two duty cycles and again, I've created B. Now you're going to say, well, let's have a look at how that's wired up. Sure. That's this side, the campfire. So what I've done here is I've used pin zero is going to red. That's the exact same as pin zero went to red down here. But pin two goes, pin two up here. There's pin two. Pin two goes to from the yellow and comes down here to the yellow LED. These both come back on 220 ohm resistors and back to ground. On here, it might be a little more visible, but there's that wave, that sine wave look here. That's actually telling me that's a, that's a true analog pin. It actually has true analog out as opposed to digital analog. Like these here are simulated by having pulse width modulation and three and four also have pulse width modulation, but this one has true analog. So if you actually saved a wave file on this chip, for instance, in the memory, you could actually play it back through a speaker and then a small amplifier or to an earbud and you would actually get sound out of this. You can actually play true sounds. So it has that feature built into the trinket. Uh, and again, all of these pinouts are available the same, whether it be uh, CircuitPython programming it or Arduino. So this is available. You can program it with either one. So let's get back to our program. So our program here is we're looking at it again. Uh, it's a little bit longer and this is, this is going to be why. So while it's true, increase the brightness, if not at full. So in other words, I'm going to look at the brightness and this is a, basically a cycle I'm looking at. I'm, I'm saying using the variable B, which I start out B is zero. So I'm saying if it's less than 30,000, change my duty cycle and set it to whatever the value B is. And what I do here is I go B equals B plus 100, print B, time sleep. Now I could have done this with the four in range, you know, four B in range, and I could have used the zero to three thirty thousand and one hundred, and I could have written that like I did the other one. So there's more than one way to do everything in a lot of cases. I've created a short pause in here, and the only reason for this is because I print the value of B. If I don't include this, sometimes it hangs up because it's just so fast compared to the Arduino. So it actually tries to update the, the printed version too fast. And then what I do is here is I create a, a pause between flicker calls. Time pause is going to be equal to random, random integer from zero, but less than 10. So it's actually going to go, it's going to be 10, in, 10 numbers starting at zero. So it's actually going to go from zero to nine. It's never, it should never reach 10. It go, actually goes from zero to nine, the way the random works. And then I actually print that time pulse. And then I say time sleep for however long it told me. From zero, in other words, don't, don't sleep, or sleep up to nine seconds. And then what I do is I do what they call a dip. And dip is equal to random and a random integer. And I want it to go from 5,000 to 25,000. And I do that because what I'm eventually going to do is I'm going to set way down here is I'm going to take B is equal to the dip. So whatever number this happened to randomize out at, I'm going to set it and I'm going to dim the light on the fire. A fire, when you look at it, doesn't stay a constant brightness. It changes in brightness. So what happens is it comes on and as it burns, it starts to glow down. And then all of a sudden you'll get some flame and you get a little flash of yellow for the spark. So that's what I'm doing here. So every time it gets below 14,000 on the dip. So in other words, the light has cooled down to 14, 000, under 14,000. I'm going to say flicker or random times from zero to four. In other words, zero to three flickers. If the flicker, it, while the flicker is greater than zero, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, print the flick, and then I'm going to go yellow duty cycle. I'm going to set it to 25,000, so not quite full brightness, but pretty bright. I'm going to set red down to 10,000, so I'm going to cool it down even more. I'm going to take the time sleep 
I'm going to make it 30 thousandths of a second. Then I'm going to set yellow off. And then I'm going to set the whole thing to sleep for a half, for 50 milliseconds. And then I'm going to subtract one from the flicker until I get down to zero again. And what that does is that counts how many flashes I get on this. So it may not be looking like it's doing much, but it actually is. And then I reduce the brightness. So let's have a look at the serial monitor. I should be able to talk to this. There it goes. So the numbers are increasing and you can see that it will flicker. So as the numbers come up here, and we should see it and it, if the numbers drop low enough, those are how many seconds in between. So that's gonna be eight second delay. And then we're going to have a four second delay, but what does it drop to? Oh, it dropped low enough. We probably got a flicker and I didn't quite see it as I was watching the screen. So let me just turn this again so it's in a shadow. There it goes, it flickered a bit. I'm just trying to give you a little better idea what you can do with this. And what I would do is I would build this underneath a campfire and I would put a piece of maybe red um that packing cellophane that they use on uh, to wrap items or a, a, a semi-clear red color to diffuse it a little bit and i think you'll get a much better time oh my delay does go up to 10 sorry you guys it does include 10. and you'll see that the red will blink down a little bit there it goes and then it comes back up so it's gonna cause some movement in the campfire. And sometimes it drops a lot more, sometimes it drops less. So that's the whole idea with the random, is we wanna make adjustments so it's not always the same. So that's what we're doing with the campfire. So we can actually do this with the campfire and we can do a num numerous things with it. I'm gonna shut off those numbers over there because they're gonna get distracting. But the idea is, is to take that light, okay, if I do this, You'll actually see that red light will change slightly every once in a while. And we'll even get the odd flicker in there. And the thing is, I don't want it to flicker every time. So I just want it to happen now and then. So I've picked a fairly low threshold at 14,000. So sometimes it'll go, it could even go a minute without flickering. But the whole thing is, it's not to be too distracting, but just movement on your layout. So as you go to an area that's a little darker, this could also go inside a wood stove if you can see the uh, stove door is open on the, uh, if you're using a wood stove in a building, but you can see the stove, you can have the glow from it and have it so it changes now and then. So it's not always the same. It just adds a little bit of life to your layout. So with all of that happening, we have one more to look at, one more circuit to look at and we're gonna build this. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to uh, allow me to unplug this because we're going to plug in the last one. So it says it's okay to unplug. So we're going to go ahead and unplug that, move that board out of the way. And we're going to bring the last board in here, which is this one. Let me get rid of this other plug off of here. I don't need this now. I was feeding it with power because I don't have enough USB cables. And let me just bring that up into here. You know, I'm going to bring it through here. I want to get this light so you can see it. I think I could probably tuck it underneath there. So what this is, this is to simulate a welder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this program here. And what we're going to do, I'm not going to, I'm going to, yeah, do I want to load it? Yeah, I think we will load it. We're longer than I thought we would be. So you know what? Let's load this file. Let's have a look at uh, what we got. So this is my welding flash circuit. So this is what we're gonna look at here is welding flash. So I have a, a CircuitPython M, I have a uh, Feather M4 Express running with CircuitPython on it, and I have a NeoPixel hooked up to it. And I, I'm gonna tell you why I have a NeoPixel. So what I'm gonna do, and I, and I have it on an M4 because it was handy, for one thing. I could, do, I could put this on a trinket as well, it would fit and it would fit with the amount of code and everything without any real problems. So let's have a look at the circuit that we're going to be using for this. 
So very simply here, when I look at my circuit, here it is. Here's our Feather M4 Express. What I've done here is I've got my ground pin coming around and my ground connects all the way out here to my NeoPixel strip. Now up here, I'm showing a strip and it has as many NeoPixels on it as you want. And this is the beauty because I only need three wires going up into my building to run this whole thing. And I can even do the lighting in the building and any other lighting I want to do in that building because they can just be more NeoPixels on the strip. I only have the one connected right now, but I can hook up more. Down here, I've got a USB power, so I get my full five volts. You can also power it back through the USB. That's what I was doing when we first started today. I actually put power in five volts on the USB without the USB connected. So you can back feed this no problem at all, and it runs five volts in. That way I get five volts out to my NeoPixel strip, and I'm still only getting the 3.3 that this requires. And then I have a signal wire coming off of pin five. Pin five already has a shift uh, already looks after it properly and talks to NeoPixels properly. And that's the other reason for using a, a um, Feather M4. Not only does it have a ton of memory, which it does, but it also has the proper output to feed a string of NeoPixels. Because NeoPixels is like a 5 volt signal, although you can get away with less. So let's go over this program and we're going to make some adjustments to it while we're at it. So let me just turn off the picture of the wiring. Very simple wiring, the beauty of NeoPixels. So let's look at what we have in here. So we have welding flash. And again, I created this and actually it's 5.3.1, not 5.3.0. Um, we're gonna include any helper files we need. But this time we're using board time random. Again, I want random and NeoPixel. So basically I set up my object here for my NeoPixel object. And it just says pixels equals NeoPixel dot NeoPixel board D5. So I'm using pin D5. I've set it for a length of one. If I want to add some room lights to this. And we're actually going to, I think if we have time, I don't know if we'll have time, but I might try to add that just before, just to show you I can put another NeoPixel on. I can grab another NeoPixel and plug into this one. And we set the brightness. I've created some preset colors that I'm using. I created black, which is basically off. My spark, I played around with these numbers a lot to find out what I liked. So my spark, when I'm sparking up my welder, so when he makes it with an arc welder, when you make it, you get a bright light off of it for a moment. I put that as 150, 150, 200. These are all adjustable for every variable from zero to 255. Yellow is at 140, 10, zero. And then I went to a darker yellow, and these are when you're doing your burn. So once you've done your arc, you get that glow because it's constantly burning and you get a bright yellow. And then I got a slightly darker yellow, so it shows me some variance in this. If you look at this color here, let me try to shadow it. You get the blink, and then you get some pulsing going on on that yellow. And that's what I want. So that's as if somebody's moving the arc welder handle down the run. And the arcs are when he's first making contact until he gets a good contact. Then the arcs go away and you just get the steady. You get the sparks go away and you just get the steady burn. So create any variables. I'm going to create current time because I want to use a timer. My weld time is equal to current time plus six. And my weld delay is equal to zero. So what I'm doing here now is when I first started up, I want to make sure my pixels start out as black. And I tell it to set the pixels to black. So when I first start up, it turns off all the lights. It turns off all the pixels. Then what I've got here is while true, it says get current time from the MPC, in other words, from the processor. And it does, it grabs the internal time. Then what happens here is every time well time is reached, don't forget well time was current time plus six. So six seconds after I read that, this is gonna say, hey, if the current time is greater than well time, so it's going to wait about that six seconds. So every six seconds, it's going to do something. And what's going to happen here is it's going to come up to well time. Then it's, I, I've created a little part here called create a random number of sparks to start welding. So in this case here, I've set sparks equals random, random range. And I've said from one to five with an increment of one. And it says for count weld, here I am in range sparks. 
So whatever my sparks are, pixel zero being the first pixel in the run is equal to the color spark that I created up above. And I'm gonna have it display it. I'm gonna show it for 50 thousandths of a second. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to darker yellow. I don't want it to go black. I just want it to go to dimmer yellow. And I'm gonna show that and I'm gonna do that for 50 milliseconds. And I'm gonna do that for anywhere from one to five sparks. So I'm always gonna get at least one arc when I do it, but I don't know how many. I could get anywhere from one to four. There, I got three on that one by the looks of it when it just went on the picture. If I look at the next one, it looked like it only did one. So it's not always the same. So it does vary it up a little bit. And then what I do is I say, create a random run length for welding. Well, the bead that the welder is gonna be putting down isn't always the same length. So sometimes it's long, like it just happened to be there. Sometimes it'll be very short. So the next one that pulses here, let's have a look here. And uh, it looked like it was about three or four seconds. So relatively short. When the next one happens, oh, it looks like we got a little longer that time. And really it's not full, three or four seconds is probably a, a six or seven on the numbers. So what happens here, again, it does the counts. What it does at this time is it goes to yellow, which is the brighter yellow. It turns it on, it turns it on for 400 milliseconds. In other words, four tenths of a second. Then it goes to darker yellow, but it only does that for 150 milliseconds. So I start creating this pulse. Every time it does that pulse, it actually gets through a count. So that would be part of my count. And then what I do down here at the bottom, it says create a new random weld time. So my weld time, I started out with six seconds the very first time. But what I do here is I actually say, hey, adjust it from six to 12 and then set a new delay time, a weld delay. So it actually gives me a different length of time that I can play with. So very quickly, I'm gonna add one more thing. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I just had to go and get it. We have a couple of minutes. I know this is getting close to the end, but what I wanna show you, and let me see which end I need to connect. I'm gonna put in a second light. So I'm just gonna come down to the end of this one, line up my colors, plug that in. And what I can do here is I'll tuck this underneath the edge of the board just so I can hold it there. And I've created a second light. So there's my first one with the welder on it. I've added another NeoPixel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do two things here. First of all, I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna change the number of NeoPixels from one to two. So very quick change to the program. I'm gonna add another color and I'm just gonna call this one white and that would be equal to 255, 255, 255. So I've created that. And what I'm gonna do here is just to show that it can be different is I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna go right at the top here and I'm gonna go pixels and I'm gonna create my bracket and I'm gonna put in position one now. Position zero is the welding light. Position one is this new light I've just added down here in the corner. And I'm gonna say, uh, what do I wanna do? Oh yeah, I say I want it to equal something. So I'm gonna equal and I'm gonna set it to white. I better use a capital W because I did in my other ones. So I'm gonna set it to white. And that's all I'm gonna do. What that means is when I start this thing up, that light should come on full brightness. So this could be my building light. So I'm gonna hit save. And there it is, it came on in full brightness. You can actually see it looks a little blue in the camera because it's so bright. But the other one is still working. Now the beauty of this is, is that I can turn around with this one and say, okay, well it's white there. Let's say I don't want white light, I want a yellow light. So okay, I'll make it my darker yellow. 
So I'm just going to pick here darker yellow. So I put it in. I'm going to hit save. Now when I do that save, it's gone to that dimmer yellow color. It's not actually white anymore. It looks still white, unfortunately, because it burns it out. So let me pick a color that it would not be. And the beauty is I can pick as many of these colors as I want. So instead of white being full brightness, let's dim that down a bit. Let's make these 100s. And this is the nice thing with CircuitPython is I can make these changes really fast. So while I'm trying to develop this, I can make the changes here. And I'm going to tell it to save. And it's a dimmer white, still hard to see. Well, let's just show another color just to show it totally different. I can say blue equals, and it's RGB, so it's going to be zero. Oh, I already put that bracket in. Zero, comma, zero, comma. Uh, let's say uh, we can leave it with 100. We don't have to have a bright blue light. Let's see if we can do it dim enough. I'll come down here to the pixels. I'll change it to blue. And I'm going to hit uh, save. And now we can see it's gone to a blue light. The beauty of this is it changes really quick. I can now turn around and have that light come on and I can base it on any number of things. So if I brought in a sensor, I could actually take a sensor and have it operate my building. And I could have it, I could put a, one of those LDRs, for instance, that we used before, the light dependent resistors. We could put that hidden on the building roof somewhere, maybe in a chimney. So when we go to a night scene on our layout, in other words, we dim down our lights on our layout, we could have it turn on the interior lights. So that could be an input going into the board and telling it to turn on that pixel. And then we can adjust it. If you're looking at it being in the uh, older days, you want it to look like incandescent lights, make it kind of a goldy yellow hue. If you want to make it something else, but our welding circuit doesn't have to be affected. We can have multiple things happening on that string of lights at one time. So these are lighting effects that are all suitable for any layout, whether it be N scale, HO scale, O scale, G scale. It just gets easier and easier actually, and you get more room to hide things in the bigger scales, although it does take more light, but you can certainly do it. And you can certainly add more and more features to it. So this is how you add model lighting effects to your model train layout. You bring in these lighting effects. It really helps bring your layout to life. So it's not just static anymore. So just as a review, today we did a lighthouse beacon. We did the strobe with the fading strobe so it fades as it dims down. We did a campfire circuit and now we finished off with a welding circuit and building lighting all in one. So we've created a number of different circuits today. These are all done. I only did them in one language or the other. The only one that was done in Arduino was the lighthouse but you can recreate these in either language and they aren't that hard. All the code has been shown on the screen. All the code works. It's just learning how to adapt from one language to another. So I hope this has been interesting. I've enjoyed doing this. I hope you've enjoyed the show. If nothing else, you've seen some new ideas, maybe giving you some, some hints on what to do. So I'm going to be closing this off because we've been here for the hour now and we're slightly over and I don't want to go any further. So I just like to say thank you. Thank you for watching. This has been Microcontrollers with Kinger North, episode 24, Model Train light, Layout Lighting FX with CircuitPython and Arduino. So thank you. Don't forget to uh, follow me if you want to get announcements about when these shows are happening on Twitter. At, use my handle, at Kinger North. Or you can use YouTube. You can go to my youtube.com slash Kinger North. Don't forget to give me a like for this video or a thumbs up. You know, I always like to see those, those thumbs up. It's great to uh, see. Tell your friends. Tell them to come on and uh, watch things. Everybody have a great weekend. Get out there, do a little bit of programming, and light up your layouts. Have fun. Bye for now.